this nation and the whole world are going to be stunned, totally shocked, sobered, yet with great fear and apprehension for what they will see by looking up into the sky and seeing the sign of the Son of Man as he prepares to return to this earth. I wonder if that's something that we ever really think about. To know that it's going to happen and a lot sooner than people realize. What will then they see? The Holy Bible tells us, Matthew 24, verse 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they would see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. An awesome and a most spectacular sight to behold. Mankind would be panic stricken, fear such as they've never experienced before in their lives. They will run, try to hide themselves in the rocks and the caves for fear of what is going to take place on this earth. Try to hide from it. This will be preceded by terrible things taking place in the heavens and on the earth. Luke wrote in 21 verse 11, there will be great earthquakes. All is taking place about the same time in various places and famines, pestilences. There will be great fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The Apostle John, foreseeing this in vision, adds to what Luke wrote in Revelation 6, verses 12 and 13. I looked, and when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, a gigantic earthquake, one that has never been experienced to this degree before. Off the charts, a great earthquake will take place. And the sun will become as black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon become like blood. And the stars, the large, not stars themselves, but meteors of heaven fell to the earth, striking the earth like atomic bombs, similar to what took place in 2013 when a meteor struck in Russia, falling out of the sky with a streak of light following it and landed in Russia. Yes, the stars of heaven fell to the earth, a fig, like a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. A great time, a time of great fear and trepidation. Just totally totally not knowing what to do, what to, what to think or to say, but to, to try to find, to try to hide themselves from what is coming in time of great fear. Let's take a look briefly at what did take place at that time to give us an idea of what those meteors will do or what they will be doing, what they will look like, and the fallout from them as a little bit from the one that fell in Russia in 2013. The, this meteor was a super bolide that entered Earth's atmosphere over the southern Euro region in Russia on 15 February 2013 at about 9.30. It was caused by an, an approximately eight uh, diameter, 59 foot in diameter, a, a 9,100 ton short ton near Earth asteroid that entered the atmosphere of a shallow 18.304 degree angle with a speed relative to Earth at 
42,690 miles an hour. That's how fast they travel. 42,690 miles per hour. The light from the meteor was briefly brighter than the sun, visible as far as 160 miles away. It was observed in the wide area of the region and in neighboring republics. Some eyewitnesses also reported feeling intense heat from the fireball. So you can imagine when you want to read these statistics like this as to what is going to be happening at that time with not just one, but any number of meteors falling from the sky. Goes on a little bit more. The object exploded in, in a meteor air burst over Shabansk, uh, Oblast at a height of about 18.5 miles or about 97,000 feet. The explosion generated a bright flash, producing a hot cloud of dust and gas that penetrated to 26.2 kilometers or 16.3 miles, which would have been 86,000 feet. And many surviving small fragmentary meteorites uh, they large, created a large shock wave. The asteroid had a total kinetic energy before atmospheric impact equivalent to the to the blast yield of 400 to 500 kilotons of TNT. Estimated from inference sound and seismic measurements, this was 26 to 33 times as much energy as that released from the atomic bomb that detonated at Hiroshima. At Hiroshima. So again, brother, you think you think about this. Think about this when, this when you have not just one again, but you have any number of them that are falling to this earth. These are terrible times that are coming on this earth. And I don't know that people really understand or even think about it. They think of it, everything going along, everyday life is going to be the same. Tomorrow will be no different, but tomorrow will be different. It indeed will be different. Continuing with Revelation 6, verse 14. Then the sky split apart as a scroll when it rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place because of this gigantic earthquake. And the kings of the earth, the power block nations of Europe and Asia that will gather in the valley of Jehoshaphat to fight to the death for rule over all nations, Armageddon, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, and every slave. You think about every slave. Those slaves will be people that will be going into captivity after this nation is destroyed. They will be moved out, as the scriptures tell us, and they're going to be as slaves in Europe and other places. These are people, some of whom you know and I know. Maybe some of you are listening to me. Maybe you're going to be caught up in it too. I hope not. I pray not. The mighty men and every slave and all and every free man hid themselves, notice, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. That's how terrifying this time is going to be. And going on and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And this is what they will see as Christ orbits the earth. So all mankind will be able to see him. Yes, who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. God is very angry. He's very angry and all over this nation. Britain, he's, he's angry with the whole world because of the sin and all those things that they are doing, rebelling against him and his holy righteous laws. Revelation 16, verse 1 tells, And I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So this is coming along after or about the same time. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came up on the men who had the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is going to take place. And a lot of people are very people that, who, who are not even religiously oriented. I think back to the times at the time of President Reagan. He moved into a home that had the number 666. You know what? He had the number changed. He had that number changed. 
And there are a lot of people who feel a lot, a lot like he did. Yes. So the mark of the beast and those who worship his image, his government, the na 10 nations that will form the Holy Roman Empire. And this is going to be true. It, it, the mark of the beast is going to be a time when you cannot buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. You have that either a little chip implanted in your forehead or in your hand, and that has to be shown when you try to go and buy groceries or whatever you want to do. You have to put your hand out of there and so forth. And if you don't have it, you don't get it, you don't buy it. Then you go hungry. Then you go hungry. But these are terrible times that are coming on this earth. Now, in the meantime, God's church, his faithful, true, and loyal church, where will they be during this time? They will be in the place of safety that God will have provided for them, as he tells us in Revelation, the 12th chapter, that he will have provided for them with food and drink. And either, even though they will see these things taking place, it won't touch them. They'll be kept safe from it all. And to know this is only six years from this year 2023. That is from this year 2023 and then 2029 when Jesus Christ will return to this earth. How do I know? I know because Christ has revealed it to me by opening my mind to understand. Other than Mr. Armstrong understanding the overall that is to take place, no one else does understand the when and the how at his time. You won't hear that from any of you who are listening to this and, and where you're in some of these churches. You won't hear that. They don't know. They don't understand because God said he'll hide it from them. You're hearing the only voice right now that is telling you what is going to take place and when. And I'm telling you from the scriptures. Jesus said in Matthew 25, verse 13, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So a lot of people will look at that and say, hey, you, don't, you don't know because it tells us you don't know. No, you're not paying attention to what the scripture says. Neither the day nor the hour. He doesn't say year, does he? No, he doesn't. Neither the day or the hour. He left out the year because scripture tells us when the day and when the year will be. Now, I know I, I've read where some think that they, they don't go beyond this. They think, oh, nobody will know. Oh, yes, so they will. God's true minister does understand. God has revealed it to me. And I'm sorry that they don't. I, I wish they did. I wish they did. For their sake, I wish they did. The end time prophecies revealing the major the events that are to take place are made known in Revelation, Matthew 24, and other books of the Bible. But they've been closed until this, the end time. They've been closed to understanding. God opened the mind of Mr. Armstrong in 1934 to begin to understand. But this was made known by the angel of God to Daniel, sealed to understanding until the end time. In Daniel, the 12th chapter, verses 4 and 10, we find where it was written by the angel, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase both on the secular area, but also within the church. Many should be purified to the trials and tests that have to, have to endure to prove, made white and refined. But the wicked won't understand that. The wicked will do wickedly, and, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. Well, where does the wisdom come from? It comes from God. It comes from God. And this kind of wisdom doesn't come any other way than directly from God. 
Jesus Christ spoke of the unsealing of those prophecies that are to take place and then made known to his true ministry. He would be using during this end time. Again, Mr. Armstrong was given an overall understanding, but not having lived into the very end time, having died 37 years ago, he was not given the years when they would take place. He knew the coming of Jesus Christ was imminent. He spoke of that over and over again, maybe five years, maybe 10 years, 15 years, and even for or 25 years. He just didn't know because he hadn't lived into this time. You have to live into the time where these things are, are taking place for God then to open the mind to understanding and then to make it known. Notice we, we know for Christ has revealed it in John the 16th chapter, verses 13 to 15. And, and these scriptures make known that Christ has revealed this to me. John 16, verses 13 through 15. However, when it, the spirit of truth, has come, it will guide you into all truth. Guide you into all truth. For it will not speak of its own authority, but whatever it hears, it will speak and tell you the things to come. And that's what Christ is using me to do right now, to tell you the things to come. It will glorify me, for it will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said it will take of mine and declare it to you. Some will think, well, I'm taking too much on myself. Well, you think for a moment. Someone has to understand and warn of what is soon coming on this earth. I don't know of anybody out there. Now, God, as Mr. Armstrong has said, God only uses one man at a time. You check throughout your biblical history, and you'll find that is true. He only uses one man at a time. Sometimes he has an associate, like he did with Moses. He had Aaron. But he was the man God was using. And so it was with Abraham and all the others that God did use. Further, I am not a prophet. I don't claim to be. No, I claim a, a lofty title. I am a church pastor. That's all the title that I claim that was given to me as a senior church pastor. However, as scripture makes known, when you see these things taking place, then you will know that God, our Father, and Jesus Christ has used me to make known these things before they take place as a warning. As a warning, somebody has to warn. As Mr. Armstrong said numerous times, I just wish there were others who were doing this. But he was the only one that God was using. And so it is with me at this time. And if you heed the warning, you can be spared. The mission of this congregation, throughout the Holy Bible, it can be seen that God always gives warning before he brings calamity on his people. The following scripture is God's promise never to dramatically intervene in world affairs without first revealing his intention to his servants. This is made known in Amos, the third chapter and verse six. Surely the eternal God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servant, the prophets. Unless he reveals his secret, and of course that prophet, this says it means ministers as well. And first to Mr. Armstrong and now me, 37 years after his death, making this now known to America and Britain, as, as a Hosea the prophet wrote in Hosea 5, verse 9. Among the tribes and nations of Israel, I make known, I make known what is sure, what is sure to come to pass. And then we're to move forward with it, like it says in the book of Habakkuk, we're to run with it, to make it known, to make it plain. And I'm doing my best with God helping me to make this plain as I know how. So try and help you. Try and help you. That's my intention. You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who is there might come to believe in him my hope, everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's what I'm trying to do now. The point you 
to Jesus Christ and turn from your own little life and turn to him. And God will love you and he'll be there for you. So because Jesus Christ is not using me in this congregation to sound a warning of what is soon to befall this nation, Britain, and other nations. Since 2006, this tiny flock has been very low profile, very low profile, what I term as being in the shadows. Obscured by virtually everyone, termed by one minister as a splinter group, not even on radar, he said. And that's true, we weren't. Not until now that God has seen fit to begin to pull us out of the shadows and to move us forward in the sunlight to begin to make known these horrible things that are coming to give warning with hope that, there was, that many of you who are listening to here or will listen to this in time will come to see and repent and be spared from the terrible things that I have already been describing from scripture that's going to be taking place. Horrible things on this earth. So again, for good reason, God has kept us in semi-darkness and the shadows, not considered to be the large breakaway churches as being a threat to them or anyone else that could hinder God's work from going forward. It all has to do with timing, brethren. It all has to do with timing according to Christ's timetable. Now that the end of this age is only six years away, the end of this is six years away, he is using this congregation to sound the emergency alarm as one would be seeing his house as on fire. God, through his prophet Joel, sounds a warning for us now in Joel, the second chapter, and verse one. Blow the trumpet of Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. Not only coming, it is at hand. Very close indeed, very close. Up to this time, this congregation has been more or less marking time without anything really happening to bring us to the forefront and become visible. But now realizing a little time left before horrifying problems befall this nation, Jesus Christ intends this final warning for him to be made known, not only in writing, and I'd like to point you to a book, The Philadelphia Remnant. You're welcome to subscribe to this book. And it will tell you a lot of things, her writings and all that are in it, further making known the, the things that are coming to pass. And you can find that www.cog-ff.com. I'll bring it to our website. Making known again the prophetic events that have begun taking place this year, 2023. This year, the beginning of the famine is going to take place. The famine is going to last for three and a half years, taking us into the year of 2026 when it reaches its severity and people begin dying all over the places, as scripture also makes known. Third of our people are going to die from the famine and the, and the disease epidemic. The prophetic events will then mushroom within the following two years, 2024, 2025, and will then climax in 2026. The last visible warning that will cover all America will be the eclipse. I've written an article about that in, in our forthcoming magazine. It's a quarterly magazine, not monthly, but a quarterly magazine. Cover all America. The eclipse will be April 8th, 2024. It'll take place April 8th, 2024. This will show the totality of the path being on the edge of America instead of its middle as it was in the 2017 eclipse. Within that year, 2026, this nation of Britain will be brought to their knees and non-existence as nations by an unseen enemy now. It's been on the scene for a long time, gradually building to the point to where it's going to emerge in the future as found in Revelation 9, 9 chapter and verse 1, the first world that will take place. 
It will emerge as a giant world power in 2025. The prophecies of the Bible make this well known. In fact, I just recently read an article that where even they in Europe, they're expecting to be on target by 2025. And it fits what God says will take place at that time, but in a much greater way than they are anticipating at this time. This nation and Britain are already experiencing unsolvable problems, internal problems. Many are looking for solutions, but they're not finding them. Looking for solutions because everything is just going downward. Look at this nation. It's, it's in a, a total free fall. This country is in a terrible, terrible shape, as well as Britain and really the whole world. But it's being sinned. Yes, people are looking for solutions, but not finding them. It is being seen there is no hope outside of Jesus Christ returning to this earth and began ruling it with an iron hand. For now, though, all they see is doom and gloom. And it's having a devastating effect on people trying to cope with their own lives and the lives of their families. Many millions of people are experiencing a depressed state of mind. Among them are those committing suicide in society within the military are being suicidal. Taking a quote from a writing that I put together on mental illness taken as from a uh, from an article it, it was in the the uh, a, a city newspaper and I'll give the name here in a moment. But consider these following quotes in regard to mental illness. Mental illness is also called mental health disorder. It refers to a wide range of mental health condition disorders that affect your mood, your thinking, and behavior. Examples of mental illness include depression, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, eating disorders, and addictive behavior. This is a quote uh, made on December 13, 2022. Within that wide range of mental health issues, you have epilepsy and seizure. Mental illness is a worldwide problem. The following quotes reveal how mental effect illness is affecting this nation and the world at large, helping us to realize further how hopeless this world is and all the problems that people are facing, and they just don't know what to do and how to what 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 to solve. They just like the proverbial story of just putting our heads in the sand and hoping it'll all just go away, and they won't. So recently an article on this subject was published in the following newspaper that makes known the mental issue mankind is presently experiencing. This is from the record, Stockton, California, the record newspaper, Sunday, March 5, 2023. It's entitled, There's No Need to Hide It. Lawmakers share stories on mental health issues with John Fetterman, hospitalized. Cindy Woodall, USA Today, March 5, 2023. Senator John Fetterman is not alone. As the Pennsylvania Democrat remains hospitalized for a clinical depression and medical condition impacting half the country, current and former members of Congress shared personal stories with USA Today that show the nation political leaders are not sparing this, spared this struggle. There's no need to hide it. There's no need to be ashamed of it, Representative Richie Torres, Democrat in New York, told USA Today. The nation's elite political class who have experienced mental illness come from wealthy and poor backgrounds alike. They've had advantages and disadvantages. They are proved depression can impact anyone and doesn't always need a reason to begin. And there's help available. Despite millions who receive treatment, millions are suffering in silence, often afraid to reach out for help, according to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Depression, anxiety, suicide levels in kids rising. So since the uh, Centers for Disease, uh, uh, Mental Illness, at least one in five children, now this is one in five children, experiences debilitating Ill mental illness according to the Centers for Disease. Can you imagine that? Little children. Well, it's no wonder, you know, that 
you you looked at the world as saying you looked you looked at both parents and husbands and wives both working not there for the children and going to school having all these things pumped into their heads by the LGBTQ movement and, and other things and transgender and all that kind of thing. It's no wonder these kids are suffering a great deal. Control and, con and prevention. Representative Chris Stewart, a Utah Republican, said, there's never been a generation that this depressed, anxious, and suicidal. Can you get that in your mind? It's not only this country. It's Britain. It's worldwide. There's never been a generation this depressed, anxious, and suicidal. But it's not just young people. It's not just members of Congress and fast-paced, high-stress position. Depression is one of the most common illnesses in the U.S. More than 57 million, get that, more than 57 million were treated by physicians for mental illness in 2019, and more than 50 Americans will experience it in their lifetime, end quote. Spreading all the time. It's a time of doom and gloom. People see no hope. In a depressed state of mind. Epoch Health wrote, one out of every eight people worldwide has a mental health disorder. These disorders are commonly treated with antidepressants and have a problem with them. For some patients, antidepressant medications may have undesirable side effects, such as gastrointestinal disorders, loss of sex drive, and weight gain. An estimated 703,000 people a year, now notice this, an estimated 703,000 people a year take their life around the world. For every suicide, there are likely 20 other people making a suicide attempt, and many more have serious thoughts of suicide. Millions of people suffer illness and suffer intense grief or otherwise profoundly impacted by suicidal behaviors. And so they suicides in the military. You know, they're the servant. They see no hope. They're not, there's nothing going on within them that in the ranks and all that give them a cause for continuing to live. On the Wikipedia, in 2012 alone, an estimated 7,500, now this is 2025, 12, an estimated 7,500 former military personnel, personnel died by suicide. Can we grasp that? I think sometimes you need to slow down a little bit to give it time to maybe sink in your head, know what's going on. More active duty service members, 177 died from suicide that year, more that year than there were those killed in combat. The Army had 52% of suicides from all branches. In 2013, the United States Department of Veteran Affairs released a study that covered suicides from 1999 to 2010, which showed that roughly 22 veterans were dying by suicide every day. There's been a case or two since I'm, I served in World War II. I'm a veteran, and so at times, when, at a time or two, when I called, there's always a message on there. If you're calling, you're needing, you're needing uh, help regarding a, a possible suicide, considering a suicide, then you then you'd call this number. And a lot of them, and there's so many of them that they have that on their telephone. Some sources suggest that this rate may be undercounting suicides. Analysis done in 2013 found a suicide rate among veterans about 30 per 100,000 population per year compared with the civilian rate of 14 per 100,000. However, the comparison was not adjusted for age and sex. Now, look at another curse that's on this country. A terrible curse that's on this country. Think about the homeless. The homeless, you see them in every, see wherever you go, wherever you drive, you're going to find them. Camping out on the streets, 
see pictures of it in San Francisco and all over the place, Washington, wherever you go. And they're trying to find a place to live wherever they are, whether it's under a bridge, putting up their tents on the streets, wherever it may be. And sometimes they're a family with little children out there, forced out of their homes for one reason or the other. Maybe taxation, no longer afford to be able to afford their payment on their home, and they have no place to go. We're going to see more of this as time moves along. More and more people are going to be joining them. So what's going to happen? Right now, the internet reveals there are 582,462 individuals homeless in 2023. Can you grasp that? I'll give you the number again. 582,492 individuals homeless in 2023. That's in this country, America. Men, women again, little children. That's pathetic. It's heartbreaking to realize what people are going through. I know a lot of them are the addicts or whatever else, but not all of them. Little children. This country is under a curse. I think I think anybody with the right mind. If they're discerning at all, they can see all these things are going on. It has to be under a curse. Because we're not, we're not building, we're going down. Why? It's all because of a three-lettered word, S-I-N, sin. Sin. Sin is the transgression of God's holy and righteous law. Unless you repent of those then they're gonna break you, it's going to happen. People do, but people do not know the real God. They go to their churches, they're not gonna find a real God there. Sin is not in the vocabulary of these ministers in those churches, it's not there. They don't lose members. They don't wanna lose the money that comes into them. It's a tragic world. Now then, let's consider what's going on, Russia versus Ukraine. In addition to the threats of nuclear wars, Putin, North Korea, Iran, and so on. The news reveals there's a potential of a nuclear war. Threats have been made by Putin to that end numerous times. There's an article in the paper saying the complete destruction of the UK, United Kingdom, in six minutes, six minutes. That's how quickly a nuclear bomb can come to the UK, six minutes from Russia. Vladimir Putin announces deployment of Satan II. It's interesting, named after the devil, Satan II missile. Story by Dave Malin yesterday at 6 23. Russian President Vladimir Putin has announced his intention to deploy opportunity. Satan two nuclear capable missiles along with the next generation of SARMAT international ballistic missiles. The announcement was made during a military graduation ceremony for defense minister Sergei Shogo. Shogo warned of the real war being waged against Russia by the collective West. These nuclear well missiles can be launched from land, sea or air forming Russia's nuclear triad. The Satan II missile is specifically designed for nuclear strikes on targets thousands of miles away in the US and Europe. Developed in 2018, this 208 ton hypersonic missile measures 116 feet in length and can carry 15 light nuclear warheads simultaneously. It has an operational range of up to 11,180 miles and is capable of devastating the United Kingdom from a distance of 1,600 miles in just six minutes. Concerns have been raised over Putin's deployment of, of uh, tactical nuclear weapons in, in Belarus and has provided Russia with a strategic advantage by enabling strikes with NATO territory. 
U.S. President Joe Biden has warned the potential risks posed by Putin's use of tactical nuclear weapons and criticized the decision to deploy those in that nation as absolutely irresponsible. But who pays a whole lot of attention to President Biden anymore? Additionally, it's been reported that Putin had conducted a test of the hypersonic Sarmat missile in February coincided with Biden's visit to Ukraine and his meeting with President Zelensky for the U.S. sign. There are those who are really worried by what they see are taking place. The 2023 doomsday clock itself has been reset to 90, sec 90 seconds to midnight. That's how concerned they are of a nuclear war taking place, 90 seconds to midnight. It keeps creeping up all the time. But there's hope for the future, brother. There's hope for the future. Recent events coupled with the closeness of the years 2026 and 2029, Jesus Christ, who is a living head of his church and this congregation, being used directly by him has begun moving this flock to the forefront with the witness and warning of the terrible soon coming time before it takes place. And together with the recorded works of God's late uh, Elijah to come, Mr. Herbert W. Armstrong. At the same time, making known there is hope beyond all these terrible things taking place and working. A new world will soon be here, free of all the troubling issues being seen today. Happiness, peace, and love will come to pass under the reign of Jesus Christ. As it often is said, there's always a silver lining in every dark cloud. America could repent of their sins and by doing so all the horrifying times would go away. They wouldn't take place. Even you as an individual, as an individual, could also turn to the real God with heart repentance and be spared from all these things that are taking place. And be with those who are going to be going to a place of sin. You better think about it because it's your life. Now, though the following scriptures are focused on Israel, meaning this nation and Britain, whose heritage is of Israel, as scriptures make known, they also apply to any people. Ezekiel 33, verses 1 through 5 and verse 14. Again, the word of the eternal came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, when I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows a trumpet as it is not being blown, what Jesus Christ is using me to do along with the recorded works of Mr. Herbert Ever Armstrong on our website and on YouTube and warns the people then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. But notice the next verse, verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet. He did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. He who takes warning will save his life. Is that what you want? We have to turn around. You have to begin going the other way from where you're going. Turn loose of all the terrible things that may be taking place in your life. The way of the world. You have to come out of it. Set yourself apart from it and begin to live the way of God. Remember, Israel is God has chosen nation. Why? Because the scripture makes known God would use Israel as the basis or the centerpiece for saving all of mankind. But because of their abominable sins, God will permit Satan to bring out about his wrath on Israel during the great tribulation that is just ahead of us, 2026. Satan's wrath will come down hard on Israel, meaning in particular, the nations of America and Britain, and God will let him do it. Because of our abominable sins, 
All you have to do is look back to the reign of, of the Clintons. Look back to what, what Pre President Biden, uh, Obama did. Then coming forward into the President administration. It's a sad, pathetic thing that's taking place on this earth. So many people are being affected by it. Millions and millions. Again, doom and gloom, depressed state of mind, not knowing what to do, where to go, what to say. Nobody to even sympathize with, to be able to relate to. Perhaps this will be hard for some, many to believe. Regardless, it will only be three more years, and then you will see what I am saying is true. And you don't you don't agree with it now. You wait. You wait, it is going to happen, just as I'm saying, because I'm taking it from scripture. It's going to happen. I hope it will move you enough to where you begin to think about your life and where you live. And with the shortness of time, the witness and warning is intended by Jesus Christ to go forth in a much greater way than ever before. Why? You find the answer in Revelation 18, verses 4 and 5. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Are you one of those people? Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sin. And lest you receive her, her place. For her sins have heaped up to heaven. And God has remembered her iniquity. Just as it was with Abraham. When God, then known as, as the, uh, the Lord God, Jesus Christ, and two angels appeared before Abraham. After dining there, God, Abraham and Sarah feeding them all. Then Abraham walked with him, with Abraham and short distance down the road. And an eternal God told Abraham what he was going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham pleaded. He pleaded for the lives of those people. He said, if I it down as many as about 10 people, if, if you find it, you as 10 people, would you spare it? Righteous people. And he said, yes, he would. But there were not 10 righteous people to be found. Only Lot, really. Only Lot and his family because of him, just like it was Noah. And because of Noah, his family was spared. But nobody else was. So what did God do? And he sent an angel and he brought fire and brimstone down upon Sodom and Gomorrah and burned them up. Burned them up. So God is going to deal with this nation and Britain, other nations of Israel, and it's not in a similar way, but not like that, because many lives are going to be spared. Many will be going into captivity at this nation has been destroyed because it is. This nation is going to be destroyed by this unseen power that is being raised up now. It will emerge before too much long in 2025 on the world scene. And the people will worship, people will fall down and worship the beast and the false prophet will be leading. It's coming. I hope you see it. I hope you got enough vision there to be able to see to put it together. The question again is, where will you be at this coming time? Where will you be? Think seriously about it. Will you be one that will be saved? You know, I read to you the promise. Those who turn will be spared. That's what God said in Ezekiel. So will you be one who will be saved? Or will you be one who perishes? Decision is yours to make. No one else can do it for you. I pray in this congregation, pray that you'll make the right one. Time is running out.